hands and woman wants to stand. I roll in my jack, fast like the wind. Everybody's on the boardroom to the streets. I'm the man with the plan. Got the world in my hands. Every woman wants to stand. I roll in my jack, fast like the wind. Every mission I take, you know I'm gonna win. Ladies on my left, danger on the right, but it's love and respect that I'm bringing to the fight. I'm the dad with the nine lives, playing the game. A heart full of fire. Welcome to the adventures of Jay Cat, where thrills meet tenderness in a captivating blend of sexy, excitement and romance. Hosted by the adventurous Jay Bahari, this hip podcast invites listeners to embark on exhilarating journeys filled with captivating stories and heartfelt moments. Each episode explores the intriguing intersections of adventure and love. Tune in and let the adventures begin. Hi, I am your host Jay Bahari. Let's go. Jay Cat, Shadows of the Game. In a world where shadows conceal secrets, and power is measured by influence, allure, and the subtle art of manipulation, there exists one name that resonates with irresistible charm and tantalizing danger, J. Cat. A name whispered in the deepest corners of penthouses, luxury hotels, and underground speakeasies. Dark, and possibly handsome, and wrapped in a mysterious aura of enigma, J. Cat is not just a man, he's a legend, a myth crafted by the desires and fears of those who dare to cross his path. His reputation precedes him like the scent of expensive cologne, a heady mixture of power, danger, and decadent pleasure. His black suit, tailored to perfection, hugs his lean, muscular frame in all the right places, and his dark eyes glint with a knowing smirk that promises both seduction and annihilation. He moves through the world like a panther in the night, silent, dangerous, and always a step ahead. But beneath the surface of the playboy and the smooth-talking charmer lies something far more dangerous, a man of profound justice. And when the stakes are high, when the world teeters on the edge of chaos, it's J. Cat who emerges from the shadows, not to indulge his personal pleasures, but to execute a mission few would dare undertake. It was a cool evening in the city, the kind where the night seemed to stretch on forever, a velvet cloak that concealed the sinister secrets of the world. High above the glittering skyline, on the 73rd floor of the most exclusive penthouse in the city, J. Cat adjusted his cufflinks with a practiced hand. His dark hair, always perfectly styled, fell just enough over his forehead to give him that air of careless elegance. He surveyed the city below, a world he both ruled and distanced himself from. Tonight, however, was different. Tonight, the stakes were higher than usual. Word had come down the grapevine that something was off in the underground world of political corruption. Powerful people were pulling strings, manipulating governments, and hiding behind shadows of privilege. The kind of people who would burn the world to the ground if it meant securing their empire. J. Cat wasn't a man who played by the rules of society. He wasn't here to collect checks or sign contracts. He was here to reshape the game. There was a knock at the door. Enter, he said smoothly, not turning away from the window. The door creaked open, revealing his trusted ally, Lilith, a woman as dangerous as she was beautiful. With platinum blonde hair that cascaded in waves and a look that could melt steel, Lilith was one of the few people who understood the complexity of J. Cat's world. Everything's in place, she said, her voice a low purr. The intel solid. You're going to need more than just charm for this one. J. Cat finally turned to face her, his lips curling into a devil make air grin. Darling, charm is all I need. The rest is simply decoration. Lilith arched an eyebrow. Is that so? He took a step closer, his proximity sending an unspoken electric charge into the air. You know how I work he murmured, his voice a velvet whisper that sent a chill down her spine. I get what I want. Always. Hours later, J. Cat found himself in the heart of the city's most exclusive nightclub, a place where the wealthy and influential went to unwind, at least, that's what they wanted the world to think. Behind the glitzy facade of champagne fountains and glimmering chandeliers, the true business took place in the back rooms, deals, betrayals, whispered negotiations. Tonight, J. Cat was here for one purpose, to take down the corrupt political leader known only as Bishop. An under-the-table deal had been struck to sell state secrets, and J. Cat was determined to make sure the deal went up in smoke, before it burned anyone else. As he strode through the crowd, people parted like the Red Sea. His presence alone commanded respect. 
but as he walked, he didn't look like a man searching for trouble, he looked like a man who owned it. Eyes followed him, admiring and afraid in equal measure. When he reached the VIP section, the air shifted. The mood changed. Bishop was there, sitting like a king on his throne, surrounded by sycophants, each one desperate for his attention. He was older than Jay Cat, but still powerful in a way that demanded reverence. His piercing blue eyes locked onto Jay Cat's from across the room. Ah, the notorious Jay Cat, Bishop drawled, his voice dripping with sarcasm. Come to grace us with your presence? Jay Cat smiled, the smile of a man who knew he was playing a different game entirely. I'm here for something far more important than your attention, Bishop. I'm here to take you down. Bishop chuckled, a low, guttural sound that filled the room. You think you can intimidate me? You think you can control me? No one controls me. That's where you're wrong, J-Cat replied, his voice a mixture of amusement and menace. I control the game. You're just a pawn. A few feet away, Lilith slipped into the shadows, her sharp eyes scanning the room for any signs of trouble. But none was needed. J-Cat had already laid his trap. As J-Cat continued to chat with Bishop, spinning a web of half-truths and seductive lies, the final piece of the puzzle clicked into place. A signal flashed on his phone, the encrypted data from the corrupt government officials was on its way. The evidence was damning. The game was over. But J-Cat wasn't done yet. With a flick of his wrist, he sent a signal to his private team waiting in the wings. The lights dimmed, the music shifted to a low, rhythmic hum, and the air seemed to grow heavy with anticipation. Without warning, a dozen masked agents stormed the VIP section, neutralizing Bishop's security with lethal efficiency. J-Cat stepped forward, his eyes cold, but his smile never wavered. You see, Bishop, he said, taking a seat at the corrupt politician's table, you were never meant to win. You just didn't know it. With a slow, deliberate motion, J-Cat pressed a button on his phone. The data was released to the media. The whole world would now know what Bishop had been hiding. The truth would bring him down, and with it, the empire of lies that had been built on the suffering of others. But even as Bishop was escorted away in handcuffs, J. Cat's work wasn't finished. His fingers brushed against the cool glass of his drink, and his mind was already turning, calculating the next move in his complex, dangerous game. The night was far from over, and neither was J. Cat's mission. As the glow of the neon city below beckoned, J. Cat knew that every move he made, every step he took, would be felt by the world. Justice wasn't something handed on a silver platter, it was something to be taken, forged in shadows and temptation, and delivered with a kiss of danger. After all, in a world where power was the ultimate currency, J-Cat was its king. The city stretched out beneath J-Cat like a living, breathing organism, a creature of endless desires and endless dangers. The moon hung low in the sky, its silver light painting the streets in shades of black and gray, the night just as seductive as the man who moved through it. As he slipped away from the chaos of the nightclub, J. Cat's senses remained razor sharp. His mind was always in motion, calculating, anticipating. Every corner, every dark alley, every figure hidden in the shadows, nothing escaped his notice. He was a man who lived for the chase, for the thrill of the game, and he knew that Bishop was just one player in a much larger, far more dangerous game. Lilith had already disappeared into the crowd, her platinum hair gleaming like a specter in the dim lights, blending into the night like a shadow that knew no boundaries. She was his equal in every way, deadly, intelligent, and as loyal as a blade is to its master. She didn't need orders, she knew what J-Cat required. They'd met in a far-flung corner of the world, a decade ago, where the stakes were life or death. But unlike most of his fleeting affairs, their connection had been forged through fire, through shared danger, and through a mutual respect that transcended words. J-Cat's phone buzzed, and the sharp vibration jolted him from his thoughts. Lilith, Bishop's been taken care of. The evidence is out. The city will wake up tomorrow with a new kind of fear. But be careful. There's someone else watching. He paused, his fingers lightly caressing the screen as he read her message. Someone else watching. He knew the feeling, that subtle, electric buzz of someone lurking just out of sight. In his world, there were always eyes, always spies in the shadows, watching, waiting for a slip, a weakness. Let them watch, J-Cat muttered under his breath, a cold smile curling on his lips. They won't find what they're looking for. Hours later, deep in the heart of the city, J-Cat sat alone in his private office, the faint glow of the skyline through the floor-to-ceiling windows casting long shadows across the room. His hands were steepled in front of him, his gaze distant as he analyzed the implications of tonight's actions. 
Bishop's fall had been inevitable, but the real question was who was next? JCAT didn't just take down criminals. He reshaped the playing field. He created voids where power once stood, and then he filled those voids with the kind of influence that could change the world. His attention flicked to the sleek black laptop on his desk, and he opened the encrypted file Lilith had sent. The screen flashed with images, files, and names. A map of the corrupt network that stretched from the city's underbelly to the highest offices of government and business. The kind of map that made even the most powerful men tremble. But for JCAT, it was simply another puzzle to solve, another game to win. There were new names on the list. Powerful names. Names that JCAT had yet to confront. But there was one name that stood out, a name he recognized from a past long buried, Victor Argent. Victor Argent was an enigma, a man of enormous wealth and influence who operated in the shadows like Jay Cat himself. His empire of corruption spanned continents, and rumors suggested he was more than just a businessman, he was a power broker, a puppet master, a man who pulled strings that shaped the fate of nations. Jay Cat had crossed paths with Argent before. It had been years ago, a brief encounter in a forgotten corner of the world. The man had always been a whisper on the wind, never seen, but always present, controlling events from the shadows. And now, J-Cat realized, Argent was looking to expand his influence even further, into new territory. Territory that J-Cat controlled. The thought of this looming threat stirred something deep inside him. It wasn't fear. It was competition. A challenge. And J-Cat never backed down from a challenge. The following night, J-Cat found himself in the heart of one of the city's most exclusive, members-only gentlemen's clubs. The air was thick with the scent of expensive cigars and rich perfume, the low murmur of voices blending with the jazz music that played softly in the background. It was here that J-Cat was to meet a contact, a man who had intimate knowledge of Victor Argent's inner circle. He was a small-time player, but he had access to the kind of information that could bring down men like Argent. As J-Cat entered the private lounge, heads turned. It wasn't just his suit, though it was impeccable, tailored to perfection by the finest designers in Milan, it was his presence. He moved with a kind of quiet confidence that made people take notice. His eyes, cold and calculating, swept over the room with the precision of a predator. At the back of the lounge, in a shadow booth, sat his contact, Cyrus, a rat-faced man with slicked back hair and an air of nervous anticipation. His eyes darted around the room, scanning for threats. He was trembling, but J-Cat knew better than to judge him for that. Fear was a currency, a tool that could be leveraged. J-Cat slid into the booth across from Cyrus, a glass of whiskey in hand. He took a slow sip, savoring the burn as it slid down his throat. He didn't speak right away. He didn't need to. The silence between them was thick with tension, the kind that crackled before an inevitable storm. Cyrus cleared his throat. You. You came. His voice was shaky, but there was a gleam in his eye, a mix of excitement and fear. I thought maybe you wouldn't. You're... you're even more dangerous than they say. J-Cat chuckled darkly. Danger is subjective. What's important is the information you have. Cyrus swallowed hard, wiping his brow with a shaking hand. I've got it. Everything. Argent. He's got a deal with the highest bidder. He's pulling strings in Washington, manipulating votes, controlling the flow of arms to destabilize entire regions. His reach is limitless. J-Cat leaned forward, his eyes narrowing. I'm listening. Cyrus leaned in, his voice dropping to a whisper. But there's more. You can't just take him down with a press release or a swift strike. He has someone inside your organization, someone very close to you. Someone who's been feeding him information. He hesitated, as if weighing the danger of speaking the truth. I didn't want to believe it, but I've seen the evidence. They're in your inner circle. The revelation struck J-Cat like a fist to the chest, but his expression didn't flicker. He'd known the stakes were high, he'd expected betrayal at some point. But someone inside his own ranks? No matter. He was always two steps ahead. Thank you, Cyrus, J-Cat said, his voice smooth and cold as ice. You've been most helpful. He stood up, finishing his whiskey in one long, deliberate gulp. Cyrus watched him, a flicker of hope in his eyes. But before the man could say another word, J-Cat turned sharply, signaling to the shadows. Two of his trusted agents moved swiftly, ensuring that Cyrus's usefulness came to a quick and clean end. As J-Cat stepped back into the night, the weight of the world settled once more on his broad shoulders. He had a new target. A bigger game. 
and no matter how deep the betrayal ran, no matter how powerful the enemy, J-Cat would always come out on top. After all, in a world where power was the ultimate currency, there was only one rule, the game was always won by the one who never stopped playing. And J-Cat? He never stopped playing. The wind whipped through the high-rise buildings of the city, the faint scent of rain hanging in the air as J-Cat stood alone on the rooftop of his penthouse, his silhouette a dark, imposing figure against the glowing skyline. The city was alive beneath him, every light a beacon of ambition, of secrets, and of power. But for J-Cat, the city was merely a game board, and he was the one moving the pieces. The events of the past few days had only served to stoke the fire of his resolve. The betrayal within his ranks, the whisper of Victor Argent's looming influence, and the ever-growing storm of political and criminal alliances that threatened to tip the balance of power all weighed heavily on his mind. But J-Cat wasn't a man who shied away from challenges. He welcomed them. It was just another day in his world, a world where nothing was as it seemed, where every flirtation could be a weapon, and every deal, every alliance, was a move in the endless game of influence and control. But now, he had to play his most dangerous hand yet. The phone buzzed in his pocket, vibrating with urgency. He pulled it out without hesitation and read the encrypted message that flashed across the screen. Lilith, Victor Argent is in town. He's been looking for you. I think he knows what you're up to. Be careful. J-Cat smiled, the corners of his lips curling up into that dangerous, knowing smirk. Let him come. He typed back, his fingers moving with an effortless grace. Hours later, deep in the heart of the city, J-Cat walked into one of the most exclusive establishments in the world, a private casino built beneath the city's luxurious hotels, where the truly powerful came to gamble not just money, but influence, loyalty, and secrets. The air inside was thick with the scent of expensive cigars and aged whiskey, the sound of chips clinking together and cards shuffling filling the space. High-stakes tables were surrounded by men in tailored suits, their expressions unreadable, their eyes sharp. But none of them held the magnetic presence of J-Cat. When he entered, a silence swept over the room. The kind of silence that only comes when something, someone, truly dangerous has entered the scene. At the back of the room, at a private table reserved for only the most influential figures, sat Victor Argent. The man was the very definition of control, a tall, chiseled figure with a commanding presence. His suit was sharp, his eyes a piercing shade of green that seemed to look through you, not at you. Argent wasn't just wealthy, he was an architect of power, and J-Cat knew that beneath that calm exterior was a mind just as calculating, just as dangerous. As J-Cat approached, the room seemed to part for him, the other players sensing the clash of titans about to take place. Argent's eyes met J-Cat's from across the room, a flicker of recognition passing between them, followed by a smile, a smile that didn't reach his eyes. J-Cat, he said in a smooth voice, each word carefully measured. I've heard a lot about you. I've been wondering when you'd show up. J-Cat tilted his head slightly, his gaze cool and unreadable. I've been busy, he replied. But now, it seems, the time has come. Argent laughed, a low, rumbling sound. I see. You're not just here for a game of cards. You've been making moves, J-Cat. You've been stirring up a lot of trouble. J-Cat's lips quirked. I'm just cleaning house. People like you leave a mess everywhere they go. Argent's eyes darkened for a moment, but the smile never faltered. Is that so? You think you can take me down? I'm not some corrupt politician you can topple with a press release. I control everything from behind the scenes. Governments, industries, you name it. You're just a pawn in a much bigger game. A pawn? J-Cat's voice was smooth, almost bored, but there was a lethal edge to it. I'm no one's pawn, Victor. If anyone's playing a game here, it's you but I'm done with playing by your rules. For a moment, they just stared at each other, two predators circling, each calculating the next move. The tension in the air was palpable, but it wasn't the first time J-Cat had faced a man like Argent. He knew that in a world where power was the ultimate currency, no one was untouchable. Not even Victor Argent. Suddenly, the room's lights flickered and dimmed, and the music cut out. A low hum filled the space. A subtle change, but one that sent a shiver down the spine of anyone who knew the game J-Cat played. His agents, silent, invisible, had infiltrated the casino, ensuring that no one could escape the unfolding drama. Arjun's smile faltered for the briefest moment, his gaze flicking to the shadows in the corners of the room. He knew that in J-Cat's world, there were no accidents. I know what you're up to, Arjun said, leaning forward. 
but I'll give you this, J-Cat. You're dangerous. And I respect that. But this isn't a game you can win. We'll see, J-Cat replied coldly, his eyes narrowing. The problem with you, Victor, is that you think you control everything. But power can be taken. And I'm about to take yours. Without another word, J-Cat moved with lethal grace, a blur of motion as he made his way to the back room, where Arjun's private vault of secrets was kept. The guards flanking the door didn't even have time to react before they were neutralized by J-Cat's team, who moved with the precision of shadows. Inside the vault, J-Cat found exactly what he was looking for, evidence. Hard evidence of the full extent of Victor Argent's dealings, the political manipulations, the shady backdoor arms deals, and the ruthless corporate takeovers that had made him a king in the shadows. But there was something else, something more dangerous. Argent had been keeping a secret, something personal, something that could tear J-Cat's entire empire apart if it fell into the wrong hands. As he stood there, studying the files, a voice echoed in the silence. You're too late. J-Cat turned to find Arjun standing in the doorway, his expression dark with cold fury. In his hand, he held a device, a detonator. And the cold realization hit J-Cat like a punch to the gut. This room is wired, Arjun said, his voice low and menacing. You came for my secrets, but I'm taking yours with me. For a heartbeat, the world seemed to freeze. But J-Cat wasn't afraid. He had known this moment was coming. With a fluid, almost imperceptible motion, J-Cat reached into his pocket, pulling out a small device of his own. A remote. His eyes met Argent's, and for the first time that night, the two men shared a moment of mutual understanding, a silent acknowledgement that only those who played the game at the highest level could truly appreciate. Argent's finger hovered over the detonator, his lips curled into a triumphant smile. Then J-Cat pressed the button. The hum of electricity flooded the room, and the lights flickered back to life. The vault door slammed shut with a deafening thud, locking both men inside. You really thought you were the only one with a contingency plan? J-Cat said, his voice as smooth as silk, yet filled with an undeniable edge. Argent's face turned a deep shade of red, his fingers still pressing the button with growing desperation. But the explosion never came. The device in his hand was dead. J-Cat stepped forward slowly, his movements deliberate. It's over, Victor. You don't control anything anymore. Hours later, as the dawn broke over the city, J-Cat sat in his penthouse once again, his fingers dancing over the screen of his phone as the world slowly began to digest the news. Victor Argent's empire had crumbled in a single night. His darkest secrets were now out in the open, and his political and corporate influence had all but evaporated. But J-Cat wasn't done yet. He never was. There were still pieces on the board, loose ends to tie up. After all, in his world, no one stayed at the top forever. But J-Cat? He would always find a way to win. Because in a game where the stakes were life and death, the only rule that mattered was simple, survival of the fittest. And J-Cat? He was the fittest of them all. The night was still young, and the city below J-Cat's penthouse hummed with the energy of a million untold stories, each one filled with ambition, greed, love, or betrayal. But for J-Cat, the thrill of the chase never truly ended. With Victor Argent's empire crumbling under the weight of J-Cat's meticulous manipulation, one would think the game was over. But J-Cat knew better. The pieces might fall, but the game was always ongoing, always shifting. The encrypted phone buzzed again, interrupting his reverie. He glanced at the screen without hurry, his eyes sharp but his expression relaxed. It was Lilith again. Lilith, you've done it. Argent's finished but we've got a new problem. I think it's time we talked. Meet me at the Black Lotus, 3 a.m. You'll want to hear this. J-Cat raised an eyebrow. The Black Lotus was a notorious underground club, one of the few places in the city where the elite, the outcasts, and the dangerous mingled freely. It was a place where deals were made without contracts, and where anyone who was anyone kept secrets buried deep within the shadows. A part of him felt the stirrings of anticipation. There was always a game within a game. He straightened up from his desk, casting one final glance at the city skyline through the window. His reflection stared back at him, dark and alluring, a man who moved through the world as though it were a chessboard and he, its king. By the time he arrived at the Black Lotus, the club had transformed into a den of sensuality and intrigue. Red velvet drapes adorned the walls, casting the entire room in an almost hypnotic glow. The air was thick with the scent of expensive perfume, whiskey, and something else, something far more dangerous. 
Lilith was waiting for him in one of the secluded alcoves, her platinum blonde hair shimmering like a ghost in the dark, her eyes glowing with the promise of knowledge only she could provide. She looked as beautiful and deadly as ever, her dress a slinky black number that clung to her curves, the plunging neckline leaving little to the imagination. But there was something different about her tonight, something heavy, something that didn't belong. J-Cat could sense it immediately. You're late, Lilith said, her voice smooth but tinged with an undercurrent of concern. J-Cat slid into the booth across from her, his gaze steady but his mind already working, piecing together the fragments. I don't like to rush, he replied with a slow, wicked grin. But you look. Troubled, darling. What's going on? Lilith didn't return his smile. Her eyes flicked briefly to the door, her posture tight. You're going to want to hear this, she said. She handed him a small, black envelope. The wax seal was unbroken, but J. Cat didn't hesitate. He opened it, his eyes scanning the contents quickly. Another player? He asked, his tone calculating, already shifting his mindset to the next phase of the game. Lilith nodded, her eyes glinting with an almost predatory intensity. Not just any player, J. Cat. Someone who's been watching you for a long time. Someone with as much power as you. Maybe more. J. Cat leaned back, his mind immediately drawing connections. A new player? Someone who could challenge him? This was the thrill he'd been craving, but the name that followed made his blood run cold. Elara Kane. Her name wasn't unfamiliar to him. Elara Kane was a myth in the underworld, a woman who held sway over entire continents through whispers and manipulations. She controlled markets, governments, and the most dangerous criminals in the world, but no one had ever seen her. She was a ghost, a shadow, a woman of impossible mystery and unrelenting ambition. Rumor had it that she had once been a lover of Jay Katz, but they parted ways years ago, in an explosive end that neither of them had ever discussed. You're telling me she's in the game now? Jay Cat asked, his voice low but tense. Lilith nodded. She's been pulling strings behind the scenes for years, Jay Cat and she's getting too close for comfort. I've traced some of her operations. She's been looking into you, your network, your alliances. She wants to control everything you've built. The air between them grew thick, charged with the kind of tension that could only exist between two people who knew the stakes of the game they played. J-Cat had never backed down from anyone, not even Elara. But this? This was a new level. How do we stop her? He asked, his voice tinged with something darker, something hungry. We don't stop her, Lilith said, her eyes narrowing. We outplay her. We make sure she thinks she's winning, and then, at the very last moment, we turn it all around. A twisted smile spread across J. Cat's face as he leaned in, his eyes never leaving hers. I love it when you talk dirty. The next few days were a whirlwind of activity. J. Cat moved with the stealth of a shadow, gathering intel, creating alliances, and planting false information like seeds in the dirt. Elara might have been a ghost, but even ghosts left traces. Every conversation, every move, every decision made by those in her orbit was like a thread waiting to be unraveled. And J-Cat had the skills to do just that. He spent long hours in meetings with his most trusted contacts, all the while aware that Elara's eyes were upon him, though she never showed herself. And yet, no matter how carefully he planned, no matter how many cards he held, J-Cat could not shake the feeling that he was being watched, that someone was always just a step behind, always waiting for him to slip. And then came the night he knew everything would change. It was a moonless night, and the city was bathed in an unnatural stillness as J-Cat arrived at a forgotten warehouse on the edge of town, an old, decrepit structure that was now home to one of Elara's most loyal lieutenants. The plan was simple, confront the lieutenant, get the information he needed, and use it to strike the final blow that would destabilize Elara's operation. But as J-Cat entered the building, the silence of the night seemed to swallow him whole. His every step echoed in the empty space. Suddenly, the lights flickered on, bright, searing light that illuminated the room in harsh detail. Standing at the far end of the warehouse, framed by shadows, was Elara Kane herself. She was more beautiful than J-Cat remembered, her dark hair falling in waves around her face, her lips painted red like a warning. But it wasn't just her beauty that hit him, it was the calm, dangerous aura she radiated. It was the presence of someone who had always been in control, someone who never lost. Not even to him. J-Cat, she said, her voice smooth like velvet, yet carrying an undertone of something darker, something almost predatory. It's been a long time. His heart skipped a beat, but his face remained impassive. Elara, he replied. 
I was wondering when you'd show up. The distance between them seemed to shrink in an instant, and in that moment, the years melted away. The memories flooded back, the fire, the passion, the betrayal. You've been playing the game well, she said, taking a step closer. But you always were good at that. It's why I never really left your side. J. Cat's gaze never wavered. You never did. You just waited for the right moment. Her lips curled into a smile. Exactly. And here we are. There was a long, pregnant pause, the air between them thick with the weight of everything left unsaid. But J. Cat knew, he always knew, the game wasn't about what was said. It was about what was done. And just as the tension between them reached its breaking point, Elara took a step back, her smile widening. You know, J. Cat, I always respected you. But you were never the one who would be the end game. Before J. Cat could react, the world exploded in chaos. In an instant, everything changed. A dozen armed men flooded the warehouse, their weapons trained on J. Cat. His mind immediately switched into high gear. The danger was real. LR had set him up, but she hadn't expected this. With a flick of his wrist, the lights in the warehouse suddenly went out, plunging everything into darkness. For a brief moment, LR's smile faltered. And that was all J. Cat needed. When the lights came back on, LR's men were lying unconscious, her carefully laid plan shattered in a single move. J. Cat stood, unscathed, his eyes never leaving hers. Game over, Elara, he said, his voice low and deadly. But Elara simply smiled. Not yet, J. Cat. Not yet. And just like that, he knew, the game had only just begun. J. Cat's eyes flicked over the unconscious body sprawled on the floor around him, his fingers still twitching with the energy of the fight. But his focus never wavered from Elara. She was the last piece on the board, the one puzzle he hadn't yet solved. She stood, unshaken, her back straight, her smile unwavering, as though everything was still within her control. But J. Cat could see the tension in her shoulders, the slight trembling in her hands. She was calculating, adapting. You're good, Elara, he said, his voice low, dangerous. But you always did underestimate me. She tilted her head, almost curious. You've beaten my men, J. Cat. Congratulations. But the game isn't over. Not by a long shot. J. Cat stepped forward, his movements fluid, predatory. No. It's over when I say it's over. He flicked his wrist, activating a small, concealed device hidden in his cufflink. The warehouse door slammed shut, locking them both inside. You don't control the pieces anymore. I do. Elar's eyes flickered, a shadow of doubt crossing her face for the briefest of moments. That was all J. Cat needed. In one fluid motion, he drew his pistol and aimed it directly at her chest. She didn't flinch, didn't even blink. No need for that, she said, her tone calm, almost detached. We both know you can't kill me, J. Cat. You're too good for that. You'd never lower yourself to my level. J. Cat's lips curled into a slow smile. You're wrong. I don't need to kill you. I just need you gone. He lowered the gun, and before Elara could react, he pressed a button on his watch. The floor beneath them groaned, and with a swift, mechanical hiss, the ground split open. A hidden elevator, one he'd activated days ago, appeared silently, waiting to swallow them both into the depths of the city's underbelly. Elara's expression shifted from calm confidence to something darker. Something real. You think you've won? She sneered. You're making a mistake, J. Cat. You don't know what you're up against. J. Cat stepped onto the elevator, his eyes never leaving hers. I've always known what I'm up against, Elara. It's you. And now I'm putting an end to it. We're going to finish this. My way. She opened her mouth to speak, to throw some final threat or taunt. But the words died on her lips when J. Cat pressed the button, sending them both down into the dark abyss of the city's forgotten secrets. The elevator doors closed with a soft thunk, and the lights flickered out. The city above them continued its ceaseless hum, oblivious to the battle that had just shifted into a darker phase. But as the shadows swallowed them both whole, J. Cat knew one thing for certain, no one could outrun their past. Not even him. To be continued.
And that's a wrap on another thrilling episode of J-Cat Adventures. I hope you've been on the edge of your seat, caught up in the mystery, excitement, and danger that always follows J-Cat wherever he goes. From heart-pounding action to deep emotional connections, J-Cat's world never fails to surprise. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe, or, click the follow button, so you never miss out on the next big adventure. Whether you're into romance, suspense, or mind-bending mysteries, there's always something more coming. And don't be shy, reach out. You can audio call or audio text chat with me directly. I'd love to know what you want to see next in J-Cat's world or hear your thoughts on today's episode. Want to dive deeper? Explore more of J-Cat's thrilling escapade adventure right in your hands. And remember, the podcast continues across your favorite platforms, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and Amazon Music. Wherever you go, J-Cat is right there, ready to bring you into his world of suspense, romance, and non-stop action. But it doesn't end here, this journey is just the beginning. Stay tuned for the next episode, where J-Cat takes on new challenges, faces dangerous foes, and maybe even finds love in unexpected places. Until next time, keep that spirit of adventure burning bright. The world is filled with endless possibilities, and J-Cat is proof that no mystery is too big to solve. Remember, adventure is thrilling, but the heart's deepest desires are the greatest mysteries of all. Keep chasing passion, stay fearless, and never let love slip through your fingers. This is Jay Bahari, signing off. Stay curious, stay bold, and always keep exploring, because the next chapter of J-Cat Adventures is just around the corner. Yeah.